Hey guys, it's me, MikeD57S, and I'm here with a review on the first Disney movie I'm going to do. Yep, I decided to dedicate this to someone I personally know, well, actually not personally know, but someone I've known on YouTube who I think is a really great reviewer, and also one of my inspirations, Cinematic Galaxy, aka my friend Lance. Lance, um, I really hope you enjoy this review uh, that I'm making. I decided, since that we both liked Disney and stuff, I decided I would do a review on a Disney movie that I thought about, I haven't watched, but I decided to get into. But we'll just, you know, explain it on the way. Now, the Disney movie I decided to review is the movie, excuse me, Oliver and Company. Yep. Oh, I don't want to be kidding, you're looking at the poster. Yep. Oliver and Company is the movie I decided to review. Now, this movie... Now, before we get in, it's best to talk about what Disney was going through at this time period. After Walt Disney died in 1966, Disney was going through hell trying to make movies to try and at least keep them alive, just, you know, to make sure that they would stay success. Robin Hood at least did well in the box office, but it had a lot of recycled animation, and critics at the time I heard probably didn't like it that much. I grew up with that movie, but it's not really, you know, a masterpiece or anything, but at least it's decent. But we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about, right now, Oliver and Company and what, you know, what Disney was going through at the time. And, like, during then, Disney had some movies that failed, like The Black Cauldron or anything like that. Some movies that did very well, like The Great Mouse Detective. However, Oliver and Company was a really different story. This movie, while it was a success in the box office, it actually got a lot of mix to negative reviews, and I think it actually, well, maybe it got some rotten score on Rotten Tomatoes, I think. It got some low score, but I can't really remember what it was. Hmm, I'll have to look at that later. So, yeah, like, Oliver and Company really didn't do, you know, well with, you know, the critics and stuff. Well, actually, it was a success at the box office, but for what people thought of that, about it, the critics really didn't like it and stuff. Just, I mean, Gene Siskel really just didn't enjoy the movie that much, but Robert Siskel only gave it one thumb up, if you know what I mean. However, what I'm also about to say is that the movie actually came out the exact same day as another movie did, which was none other than Don Bluth's The Land Before Time. Back when The Land Before Time was actually awesome! But now it went through hell with those stupid 12 sequels and that god-awful TV show. And guys, it's my opinion, so get used to it. Alright, never mind that. We're not here to talk about The Land Before Time, we're here to talk about Oliver and Company. Now, as for what other people, younger people like today, thought of it, there are people that actually do love this movie because they obviously have grown up with it. Because, you know, it's the basic, you know, movie with talking animals and stuff. However, what I didn't know, and I actually did find this out because I actually watched the movie last summer, believe it or not. Yeah. I missed out, and it's just I actually did prefer the Don Bluth movie at the time. So, this movie, it turns out, was actually based on the Charles Dickens novel, Oliver Twist. And, now, I want to make one thing clear to those of you who, you know, know about it. It's just, I haven't really read the actual Charles Dickens novel. No. In fact, I'm not really a big expert on Oliver Twist and stuff, and as well as I haven't even watched any movie adaptations except this one. And I didn't even know because the only difference between this version of Oliver is that instead of, you know, humans, it actually has talking animals. And instead of taking place in modern day, uh, no, I mean in, you know, the Victorian age, it actually takes place in modern day New York City. Oh, Disney, what were you thinking at the time? Well, I heard Duck Walker could have been used as a marketing tool, and it seems like it. And in this version, the character of Oliver really isn't a boy, he's a kitten, just like you can see here on the screen. 
Alright. And the only thing I do know about the Oliver story is that it's just about this, you know, orphan kid named Oliver who, you know, is an orphan, <laughs> like I just said, who is, you know, ends up in an orphanage and is getting, you know, badly abused and stuff. And he does run into a guy named Fagin and, of course, and another group of pickpocket, you know, kids who, you know, become a life of crime. And this movie is kind of like that. So, like I said, Oliver really isn't a boy. He's actually a young kitten in this. And in this version, Dodger really isn't a boy either. Nope, the character is actually a dog. But not just a dog, a very older dog. And, get this, he's actually voiced by none other than Billy Frickin' Joel. And that, I gotta admit, was awesome. And I will also be honest and say, Dodger is probably my favorite character in this movie, believe it or not. Yeah. So, the reason is because I like how, you know, carefree he is. And, you know, how he's always very friendly, he's always, you know, very confident, and is always, you know, has this good friendship with Oliver, and I love the slang talk that he does, and Billy Joel does an awesome job with that and his singing voice. I'll get to the song soon. So, he also meets up with another group of, you know, tough dogs who would be, you know, Fagin's pickpocket group, and... They're also very older as well. One of them is a Chihuahua, as you can see, whose name is Tito, who's voiced by Cheech Marin. And as for Fagin himself, he's actually, he is a thief. He's actually this bum who's actually voiced by the late Dom DeLuise. Yeah, the same Dom DeLuise who's best known for contributing to a lot of Don Bluth's work. Best known as Jeremy from Secret of Nim, Tiger from, oh yeah, An American Tale, and, of course, he was best known as Itchy from All Dogs Go to Heaven. And this is the reason of why he was never in the land before time. It seems like he wanted to take a break from all of Don Bluth's movies. <laughs> I mean, even if he was in the land before time, who would he voice? So, yeah, he actually does dealings with this gangster who actually is the main villain of this. Sykes. Yep, that's right. Bill Sykes is a freaking gangster along with his two Doberman Pinchers who were his henchmen. Yeah, because the dogs themselves need their own antagonists. So yeah, he does dealings with this gangster only because he got himself in this bad situation with this really ruthless jackass. So, while they're, you know, searching and stuff, and, you know, to try and pay off money for Sykes, Oliver runs into a little girl named Jenny who is very rich, along with her butler Winston, and they also meet up with a dog, who's a poodle, named Georgette, who's voiced by Bette Midler, who's very bitchy, very pompous, arrogant, and also very rude. Like, she's really that conceited, like, and of course, she's obviously jealous of Oliver. Yeah, so it's basically, this is one of those predictable story arcs you've seen many times before. Now... So, yeah, so the rest of the movie is just, you know, s you know, trying to solve this conflict and stuff of Oliver trying to realize which home he should have, you know, staying with the dogs or Jenny or, and also at the same time, I mean, same time, them trying to get past Sykes, who's actually kidnapped Jenny. So, yeah, I'm sorry if there's spoilers and stuff, but you're... Yeah, this movie's this review is going to be full of spoilers. So yeah, just go watch the movie before you actually watch this review. Actually, now, um, so yeah, uh, that's pretty much it. Now, the plot, like I said, is pretty predictable. You know, your basic Oliver Twist story, and. You know, that kind of stuff. You know, like, I think you get where this is going. And yeah, it is pretty predictable when I was thinking about it. But hey, we've been through a lot of predictable stories. But even so, you know what would happen in this movie anyway. And this is why I would actually prefer the Don Bluth movie that came out the exact same time as it, The Land Before Time. The only reason I enjoyed that, and it is one of my favorite movies, 
I should have put it on my top five during the Q&A, shouldn't I? <laughs> yep. The reason I enjoy The Land Before Time is because it was really, had this, you know, dark tone, and was really full of a lot, really memorable characters, and really had positive themes, and a lot of, you know, and it really felt, you know, like a Disney movie. But like I said, Oliver and Company really feels like, you know, a marketing tool, just like what Doug Walker said. And it as for the characters in this movie, like I said, my favorite would probably have to be Dodger. But as for the other characters, they're okay. I mean, I think Cheech Marin as Tito is probably funny. Oliver is pretty much, you know, your basic, you know, younger kid who just wants a home. Yeah. I, I, all right, I admit, he's kind of cute and all that, but, I mean, you've seen it all before, with, but I'm not going to thrash at it or anything. I enjoy, you know, like, Don DeLuise, probably, as, um, Fagin, and the other characters are all right. Georgette's pretty unlikable, I get the idea. The villains, I think, are, they're pretty forgetful, if you ask me. Sykes just being this dark villain is like, Oh, come on, just hand me the money, son. Yeah, I really can't remember his lines. The movie is kind of forgettable that way. But what is it forgettable about Sykes, and sorry for the spoilers, is that when he and his Dobermans are chasing after Oliver, Dodger, Fagin, and the gang in order to rescue Jenny, that they're already on, like, the Brooklyn Bridge that's about to be headed towards a subway train because they actually ran through a subway station, and they have to try and get off, but Sykes and his car don't make it, and the subway train actually crashes right through Sykes, killing him. Now that, I admit, was awesome. But like I said, this plot is very forgettable, and so are some of its characters. I mean, the voice acting actually is pretty enjoyable. Like I said, the other voice actors... I mean, Billy Joel is awesome as Dodger, and I do think Bette Midler does a good job as Georgette. The other characters, like Cheech Marin as Tito, and Dom DeLuise as Fagin, and Shirley Ralph as um, Rita, and of course, even Joey Lawrence as Oliver, they, they're actually, they do decent performances. I mean, I, I'll give the voice acting some credit. The songs, yeah, I'll get to the songs. The songs, I think, are pretty awesome, and they're pretty catchy. I will admit that Perfect Isn't Easy is pretty much, you know, okay, but it's at least a little bit enjoyable to listen to, even though it is sung, being sung by a really pompous character like your Jet, who's just obviously singing about herself. Streets of Gold, I think, was a pretty catchy song. I enjoyed Cheryl Lee Ralph singing, but none of this was compared to the awesomest song of all, which was sung by none other, I mean, none other than the piano man himself, Why Should I Worry? Billy Joel is awesome in the song. I just really enjoy it. It's just so catchy. <laughs> Why should I worry? Why should I care? I can't stop singing the song. It's so catchy. Okay, I really am annoying you, aren't I? <laughs> but nonetheless, is this a bad movie? No. It's just predictable and stuff. The animation, oh yeah, the animation. I enjoyed it at least. It's kind of stiff, but it's at least decent. I love the way they drew New York City in this. I mean, hell. I mean, every building, every angle, wow. I mean, I've been there before, and it was actually pretty awesome. So, yeah, the animation's okay, but, mm, yeah, the other visuals are fine, I think. So, as for the movie itself... I will be giving Oliver and Company 6.5 out of 10. So, yeah, my final thoughts. Not great, but, I mean, it's not a bad movie, but granted, it's not, it's not, it's, uh, here's what I mean to say. It's not a bad movie, nothing great, but at least kind of decent, but you, but feel free to check it out if you'd like to. I mean, for Disney to actually do their own version of the whole Oliver story, I mean, it's okay. I mean, and I really haven't seen any other movie adaptations of Oliver or anything like that. 
or let alone I haven't read the Charles Dickens novel, just like I said earlier. So yeah, good, but not great. I mean, if you want to check it out, go ahead. I mean, you'll enjoy it. I mean, just, I believe it's just one through, probably through one sit through. It's just, it's not awful. I think that The Land Before Time did way more awesome than this. So yeah, that's Oliver and Company. And so yeah, I mean, I'll stay tuned for more videos to come. And also, Lance from Cinematic Galaxy. Oh, excuse me. I really hope you enjoyed this review. I really hope at least it was worth, you know, your taste and stuff. So, yeah. Hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you guys did out there as well. So, this is Mike D57S, signing off, and we'll see you all again for other more reviews to come.